Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to tune your cello. This is really important as it's typically the first thing you need to do every day or every time that you get your cello out. It's a pretty quick process, but for those of you who are just getting started, we'll break down the steps today and I'll share some tips that might make this easier. To start with, here's an example of what an in-tune cello sounds like. So the string names, in order that you just heard them, are A on the top, then the D string, G string, and C string. When we start tuning the cello, we typically want to start from the top string, from the highest pitch string, which in this case would be the A string, and work our way downwards and tune the C string last. If you're just getting started, it can be really helpful to use some kind of external tool to help you tune your instrument. If you have a tuning fork in your house, that can be very helpful. A lot of people like to use electronic tuners, like this Korg tuner I have here. Korg has a lot of different types of tuners and they're all really great. Um, there are also a lot of fantastic apps for your phone that can work just as well. I really like the TE Tuner app. It gives you a little smiley face when you're in the right range of pitch. Typically, tuners of every kind can do two things that will help you as you tune your instrument. Many tuners elicit a pitch, like this one, as well as they often have a window that listens to your cello sound and tells you how close you are, flat or sharp, to the pitch that you're looking for. Typically, we tune to what's called A440. A is the pitch that we're using, and 440 refers to hertz. Hertz are a unit of measurement that we use to establish pitch. On the cello, we have two different sets of tools that we can use for tuning the instrument. We have our pegs up here, and we also have our fine tuners down here. Typically, you want to use your pegs when your cello is really out of tune, really anything more than a half step in either direction, and you can use your fine tuners to do exactly what it sounds like to finely tune your strings once you have them in the ballpark of where you want to be. So in this case, let's say that we're going to start by tuning our pegs. And as I mentioned before, always start with your A string and move downwards. And a tip here is never loosen all of your strings entirely at the same time because it can cause your bridge to fall down, which can cause a whole host of other issues. So just be aware of that as you go. Use cautious movements so as not to unwind a string or tighten a string so much that it snaps. When you're tuning your cello using the pegs, I think this is a really good time to use a tuner that elicits a pitch so that you have a constant note that you can listen to as you move the pegs. A tip when tuning your pegs is that this is a great time to check your fine tuners and make sure they're not screwed in too tightly or too loose. You want them to be somewhere in the middle so that when it comes time to use them, you have room to navigate to make the string either looser or tighter, sharper or flatter. When you're tuning the pegs, if you turn it towards the back side of the cello, or if you're holding the cello towards your head, you are tightening the string, which makes the pitch higher or sharper. If you turn it the opposite direction towards the front of your cello, then you are loosening the string, which makes the pitch lower or flatter in this case. So here's an example. It's important as you tighten the pegs to also apply pressure to push the peg into the peg box. There's really not any kind of glue or anything like that that holds them in place. It's just the tightness of the fit. So you want to make sure that you're applying a, quite a bit of pressure without forcing too much. One safety tip is that as often as possible, I try to do this facing away from my face. Just in case the string breaks, you wouldn't want it to break and hit you. So I have my tuner with the A that I'm listening for. So I can have that in my ear as I turn the peg. So listen for it to match. It's important to note that you don't need to use your pegs to tune your cello strings to exactly where you need them to be. They just need to be in the ballpark of the right pitch. 
Then we're going to use our fine tuners to further tune the cello, and that's when we get the pitch exactly right. Also, just to note, this is the A string peg, this is the D string peg, this is your G string peg, and this is typically where your C string peg is. I have one, it's just a little different and harder to see. Also, as you go along, if you're tightening all of your strings, um, pay attention to your bridge as you may be pulling the bridge slightly upwards as the tension of all the strings increases. So that's why we want to tune them one at a time. You don't need to tune them completely each time. You can um, do one round of each string, tightening slightly, and then go back and do the same thing to tightening further and keeping an eye on your bridge the whole time and making slight adjustments if necessary. A frequent issue that arises in the process of tuning your cello are pegs that stick or pegs that slip. Pegs that stick are those that you have difficulty moving at all, and pegs that slip are those that you can't get to stay in place. This is largely determined by how well your pegs fit in your peg box and can also be changed by the weather or by the level of humidity in the space in which you're keeping your instrument. A lot of humidity will generally cause your pegs to swell and possibly get stuck, while too dry an environment can result in peg slippage. If this proves to be a severe problem for you that persists, you would probably be best served to visit your local luthier and get your pegs refitted. In the event that this is a seasonal problem or one that only crops up occasionally for you, there are products that are commercially available that can really help solve this issue. Typically, we use something called peg compound or peg dope. It comes in a couple of different forms. You can get it in sort of a stick-like chalky form or in a liquid drop form. Personally, I would opt for the stick-like form. It's usually available at any string shop and at multiple locations online. To start using your peg compound, you want to apply it to the areas where your peg comes into contact with your cello. Um, you can usually tell by looking at your peg or holding it under light, you should be able to see where the quality of the wood changes, where you can tell it's rubbing against your peg box. So, as you can hear, my cello's not totally in tune yet, but it is closer, which means now it's time to use the fine tuners. Tuners work in much the same way that our pegs worked, where they are tightening or loosening the strings, but to a much lesser degree. So, in brief, if you turn your fine tuners clockwise, or to your right, you are making the string length shorter and the pitch will go higher or sharper. If you turn them counterclockwise or to your left, the string will lengthen and it will sound flatter or lower in pitch. When you get to the point where you're using your fine tuners, I think it's really helpful to use whatever electronic tuner you're using to set it to the setting where it listens to your cello and it tells you how many cents off you are in either direction. Cents is a unit of measurement of pitch essentially. And so it might give you a number like plus two or a number like minus three, which minuses means that you're flat or below the pitch and pluses mean that you're sharp or above the pitch. So ideally you want to be somewhere in the zero to plus or minus one range. It's a good idea to use your bow when you're using the tuner on the listening setting because the tuner really can't hear your pit sounds. <laughs> little too low still. Oh, that's better. I can tell it's giving, me, it's giving me a little green light. As you become less reliant on your external tuners as you advance, there are other methods you can use to help tune your strings. One very typical method is to play your strings in pairs, like A and D together, D and G together, and G and C together. Each of your strings are tuned the interval of a fifth apart. So here's an example of some very out of tune fifths on the A and D string. It just sounds re really bad. So this process is easier if you already have your A string in tune using some of the methods that we just talked about, which leaves just the other three strings to tune on your own. So in this case, if you're not sure what direction to go, just try tuning your fine tuner one way, and if it sounds worse, try tuning it the other way. So let me try making it sharper. It's worse, so I need to go the opposite direction. It's still pretty bad, but it's getting better. That's a fifth that sounds.
sounds in tune. So the next step is to repeat this process with your other strings until they all have the same in tune fifth sound. Another very common method of checking the tuning of your strings is to utilize harmonics. Harmonics are notes that sound using the overtones of your instrument and they sound with only very light finger pressure applied. You don't press the string down all the way as you normally would when playing a note. The first harmonic in question is found midway through your string on each of the strings, and it sounds the same pitch as whatever string you're playing. So on the A string, it's a harmonic A, on the D string, it's a harmonic D, and so forth. Uh, you very well might have a sticker marking where this note is. So here's the A string harmonic. <laughs> On the D string, G string, now each of those harmonics has a matching harmonic on the string below it. You find this harmonic by placing your hand in fourth position and playing where your first finger is but with only lightly applied finger pressure. checking if your strings are in tune is to see if those two harmonics match each other because they should be exactly the same pitch. So here's an example where my D string is too flat. You hear how they're not the same? So I'm going to use my fine tuners to adjust the string and make the D string slightly sharper, which as you'll recall means tuning the fine tuner clockwise or to your right. Here's an example where I have the opposite problem. My D string is too sharp, so the harmonics sound like this. You can hear how the D string doesn't match. So now you can go through and check your harmonics on the other strings as well. It probably sounds something like this. I know we've talked in a lot of detail about how to tune your cello, but as you practice and you hone your close listening skills, this process will speed up a lot and probably only take you a few minutes at most. So altogether, on a typical day, if your cello is not too out of tune, your tuning process might look something like this. <laughs> explanation and some of the tips I've shared about how to get started with tuning your cello help you and I'm wishing you all the best with your cello adventures. <laughs>